Hi guys, happy Monday. I hope that you're all having an amazing start to your week. Welcome back to our Q&A video. We have some awesome topics to discuss, so let's jump right in, shall we? Starting with the first question, what was your least used bag for 2021? All right, so I don't think it's gonna surprise you guys. Actually, it might end up surprising some of you, but my least used bag for 2021 is the Louis Vuitton Speedy 30 Mon Monogram with the Fuchsia and the Blanc. Now, the craziest thing is that I feel that the Speedy 30 is the perfect size for a handheld Speedy. Uh, and I use the Damier Ben 30 all the time. I use the Damier Zor, these both classics, all the time. But with this one, I really don't end up gravitating towards it. Um, I love the Mon Mono. I like the colors that I chose. Obviously, it has some of my favorite colors. You have the pink and the Blanc, and then I also have the Fuchsia interior, which I'm crazy about. Um, and I think I used this bag once this year, and I used it for a couple of hours. I came home and I switched into something else. Uh, but yeah, I'm just not, uh, I don't really end up gravitating towards it. Just don't mind the bow. The bandeau, uh, it's beautiful, but the bow isn't done very well, um, and it looks kind of funky on there, right? <laughs> but I've always kept it on there. Uh, but the main reason why I don't use this bag is because of the Speedy 25 bandolier. Whenever I go to use a monogram Speedy, I always end up reaching for that one versus this one. Even if I take the strap off of the Speedy 25 bandolier, I still like using it like a hand carry bag, but I think it's because I have two monogram speedies, even though they're different sizes and I feel like the sizes are a world of difference, but when I wanna go for a monogram uh, a monogram speedy, I always end up going for that one instead of this one. I've thought about selling it many, many of times and just when I think I'm gonna sell it, I end up changing my mind. I'm like, I'm so dumb, I shouldn't sell it. I think it's beautiful, but I just don't end up reaching for it. So it makes no sense because this bag literally checks off most of the marks when it comes to a bag that catches my attention. It has the colors that I like. Uh, I love the size, but um, yeah, <laughs> I just don't end up reaching for it. So the Speedy 30 Mon Mono was definitely my least used bag for 2021. But what about you guys? What was your least used bag for this year? Let us know in the comment section down below. Next question. What are your thoughts on the Chanel Advent Calendar 2021? Do you ever think to get it or why are you not getting it? Oh man, <laughs> the Chanel Advent Calendar. So I did discuss it on a previous MMQA about a month ago and I still stand by what I said as far as the presentation. So the fact that it does come in a Chanel number no. five bottle I think is absolutely beautiful. The packaging is on point. I 100% think that it is a Chanel collector's piece, a Chanel collector's item. I don't think that it's for everybody. I don't think that everyone will see the appeal to it, but as a Chanel collector, I can definitely see why they would end up going for it. Now, I love Chanel. It is my favorite fashion house, but when it comes to this advent calendar, I am not feeling it whatsoever. It never crossed my mind to go for it. Uh, at the time, I think it was $825. I don't think you can get it anymore. I've seen it on resale websites for like $2,500, $2,100. So as I said before, this is absolutely a uh, Chanel collector's item. Now, the reason why I don't think that it warrants the price point is because yes, you are getting some full size items, but for the most part, it's it's knickknacks, it's stickers, it's bracelets, it's it's not. I mean, it it just doesn't warrant the price. It would be different if they had more full size items that ended up being a little bit closer to the price point that it is. But the fact that you only get a handful of them and the majority of it are those knickknacks, again, I don't think that it warrants the price point. Uh, the people that are roasting it on TikTok uh, or on social media or whatever, or whatever it is, I don't have TikTok. Um, I, th I think it's hilarious <laughs> because I, I don't disagree with, you know, with what they're seeing or with what they're getting. They're like, what? You're getting stickers, you're getting this, you're getting that. At the same time, I think that a lot of people are doing it just for the attention because Chanel had a, had a list of everything that you were getting in that advent calendar. There were pictures of what you were getting in that advent calendar. It's not like it was closed shut and it was, oh, a surprise. You don't know what you're gonna get. No, you knew what you were signing up for when it came to that item. So in a sense, I feel like there some of these people are just trying to be a-holes, just trying to roast the company, maybe because they felt like a fool buying it and they were expecting something different. I have no idea. Again, I am not disagreeing with the fact that it isn't worth the price because it definitely definitely isn't in my eyes, but to, to just kind of drag a company just because you're like, oh my God, I didn't know I had this. Yes, you did. 
You saw the pictures, you saw the list, you knew what to expect and you still hit add to cart. So at that point, really maybe we should be roasting you and well you can still roast the company too because <laughs> because they're just they're just trying to capitalize on their on their name let's be honest i mean i know some people might disagree with me and that's totally fine but i definitely think that they're trying to capitalize on their uh on their name and at the end of the day they are a luxury company it's not like i'm expecting them to uh to you know to put a small love of good in there that's worth a thousand dollars and you're going to pay 825 definitely not that wouldn't, that wouldn't make the money, that lose the money, right? Uh, but come on, you people knew. People knew what they were signing up for, but that whole surprise, oh, I didn't know I had stickers. They had, really? Uh-uh, I did not know. Come on. At that point, you're just trying, you're just trying to get your 15 minutes of fame on, on a social media platform. I don't know, that's the way that I see it. Maybe it's because I'm old and I see things that way, but, um, I don't disagree. I, again, I don't disagree with the fact that it's not worth it because I definitely don't think it's worth. Uh, I definitely don't think it's worth a price point. It doesn't warrant it whatsoever. I can see the appeal for someone that collects these items, for someone that is a Chanel lover, for someone that is a Chanel fan. I can absolutely see that appeal. But for me personally, never thought to buy it. Um, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> Definitely not. Anyway, I would love to know your thoughts on the Chanel advent calendar. How do you feel? Let us know in the comment section down below. Next question, how would you sum up your luxury shopping this year, 2021? Did it change compared to last year, pre-pandemic times? Uh, all right, so how would I sum up my luxury shopping this year? Uh, I'm gonna have to go with Many Gone Wild. <laughs> I think Many Gone Wild would be the best way to describe what you know, how I, how the whole, uh, how the whole shopping thing went this year, uh, compared to last year, did it change? Definitely. I feel like last year I was maybe a little bit more reserved. I was a little bit more, maybe not reserved, but I was a little bit more careful as to what I added to my collection. I felt like I did a lot more research and even before then, um, I've always done a lot more research on my, on my bags and, um, I just didn't want history to repeat itself from where I was way back in the day when I first started with luxury goods and I was buying just to buy and it totally bit me in the ass. Uh, so I'm definitely not back to that. Uh, but I feel like I'm a lot more adventurous and if I've, if I've appreciated something from afar and if I've always wondered about it uh, but I've kind of held back because of X, Y, and Z. I felt like this year I just went ahead and went for those items. And um, I mean, if I have the economic possibility to add something that I really like, I feel like now I'm more, you know what, I'm gonna go for it and I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, and that's really where the whole like babying thing came from last year. It started last year, early last year. You guys heard me talk about it on a few Minx Mondays back then uh, before I stopped doing videos. And it's because I realized life is way too short. And in a, in a way, I felt like I was always so nervous about this. I didn't want this to happen. And I wouldn't really be able to fully enjoy some of my bags. Of course, some I have put through the ringer and others, I was always like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And I would just overthink it all the time. And now I definitely don't see that. That's why I refuse to baby anything. I mean, it's not like I'm going to sit there and just leave it out in the sun for for it to rot either. I'm going to be careful, but I'm not going to be as, as like, like, I'm not going to put anything in a bubble because I want to be able to enjoy them. So again, if I have the economic possibility to go for something that I really, that I really like, or that catches my eye and I can't stop thinking about it, instead of stressing about this, that, or the other, I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, and go for it. So I think that's how it's really changed. Um, again, I'm not trying. To, I'm not trying to get crazy and you know buy everything in the sun because that's definitely not something that I can that I can do anyways. Um, but yeah, I'm. I feel like I'm a lot more adventurous. I feel like I've incorporated new designs and new fashion houses and new colors that I maybe wouldn't have thought about back in the day because I was always so nervous. Or if I research something to death, I mean, I'm all for researching items because I want to be smart with my purchases as well, but I don't want it to be so much where it becomes a, uh, where it becomes not work, where it becomes a, not jo job and work is the same thing, duh, <laughs> where it becomes consume, where it consumes me, where it, where it just takes out the joy of the reason why I like bags in the first place. 
you know? So I don't want to spend so much time obsessing over every little thing. I know that might sound a little bit strange, especially since I just did a video on the Pearl Crush that I'm having a hard time deciding. So I think that's a little bit different. But in every other aspect, uh, yeah, I just, I want to have fun with it and enjoy it and just live life to the fullest when it comes to handbags. Absolutely. So bring on the color, bring on the different, the fashion houses, the different designs and whatnot. I think back in the day, my collection was only Louis Vuitton. And then I started creeping into, you know, I started creeping into Chanel. And now I have, uh, you know, I have a variety of different fashion houses and I love them all for different reasons because they each bring something different to the table that another fashion house doesn't have, you know? So I don't know. I'd have to say um, I'm really happy with the direction that my collection has, uh, has taken because it's not as and I say this very loosely because I don't want to seem like I'm a hypocrite either. It's not as safe as I used to, as it used to be for me. Uh, it's a lot more adventurous and I'm so, so happy about that. But what about you guys? Has your collection changed between this year and last year? Uh, did you do quite a bit of shopping? Did you not do uh, any shopping this year? Whatever the case may be, how has your collection changed uh, between this year, last year, or in general from when you first started buying luxury goods? Let us know in the comment section down below. Next question, any wish list items added for next year? As of right now, no, although I do have a few contenders, but as of right now, I only have one bag on my wish list or one item on my wish list, which is the Hermes Garden Party, as many of you guys know. When that will become a reality, who knows, but I'm definitely not in a rush to, <laughs> to get that bag. Um, but some of the bags that, uh, that might work their way, I think, that might end up working their way onto the wish list. Uh, one of them is the Gucci Marmont in the gray leather with the silver hardware. You guys heard me talk about it. I think it was last uh, MMQA, I can't remember, but I love that bag. I think it's beautiful. Uh, and by the way, I'm so happy to hear that some of you guys went out and got that gray Marmont bag and you're loving it. That is amazing. Major, major congratulations. Uh, so that one, I kind of have a side eye on it and it might end up creeping into the wish list. The other, is the Prada Crystal Bag in the color white. Now, I still stand by what I said that I am hopeful that Prada will end up coming out with this bag in red. I really have, I feel like I can, I can feel it in my bones that next year they will release it in red because I mean, they already have the black, of course. They have white, silver, pink, the mint green, and I think they recently launched the yellow. So I feel like it's only a matter of time until they end up incorporating the red. So I'm still crossing my fingers for it, but, the white, I have been uh, seriously like, hmm, maybe it's time it jumps onto, <laughs> onto that wish list. I think it's beautiful. Am I crazy? Probably, because I mean, it is a satin bag and you have that fabric handle. So that fabric handle is not gonna be forgiving for any type of dirt or what have you, but still, I think it is beautiful and I think it would look amazing for spring and summer. And plus, I mean, it's got sparkles all over, or it has uh, rhinestones all over and crystals all over it, so it's it's right up my alley. So as of right now, no, nothing else has been added to the wish list, but there are some contenders that just might make their way into, <laughs> into that list. What about you guys? Is there anything that you have added to your wish list for next year? Let us know in the comment section down below. Next question. Why is Goyard not so talked about? I'm personally a big fan, especially of the vibrant colors. All right, so I did bring out my tote, so we have a little bit of eye candy. This is in the color green. Uh, I, too, am a big fan of Goyard, and uh, I think that their colors are absolutely beautiful. This fashion house has been around for a very long time, and it does have some rich history, which I love and appreciate. Now, I do think that there are a few reasons why Goyard isn't as popular as other fashion houses that have been around um, just as long. Uh, one of those reasons would have to be the access to the fashion house. Now, I think that Goyard has a total of, I want to say 21 or 22 uh, boutiques worldwide. And here in the United States, I believe that they have seven or eight. I could be wrong. Please don't quote me on it. But definitely not as many boutiques as, say, Louis Vuitton or any other, I mean, any other fashion house. So I feel like it's very, very limited. Um, not only that, being able to get a hold of someone in those boutiques 
is not very easy. You either have to email them and they do get back to you within 24 to 48 hours, or you call the sales associate that might have helped you previously. And of course you can always go into the boutique as well. Um, but still, it's not as easy to just be able to log onto their website, see something that you like, and then be able to buy it. So their e-commerce is non-existent, whereas other fashion houses I feel definitely end up thriving. Uh, if you go onto Goyard's uh, website, they don't even have pricing. They don't have, it's, it's, it's almost like it's, in a sense, very, very vague. They don't, they give you just enough information that you need, but not with the pricing or, hey, here's this phone number, you can get in touch with a sales associate right now. That's not how it works. Uh, or at least that's not how I have found that it works. You guys might have experienced something different. So I think because of the the lack of access, I want to say, is maybe the reason why it's not as popular. It's not like, like before, like I said before, you can just log on to the website, get something very easily, and then you're done. It's almost like there's a little bit more of a process in order to, to get an item. Um, another thing I feel is that they don't advertise. Uh, most of the other fashion houses end up advertising. This one definitely doesn't. Uh, and I've heard some people say that when it comes to Goyard, what they really appreciate about the fashion house is because they don't end up advertising. And in that sense, it makes it a little bit more of the best kept secret when it comes to luxury fashion houses. So while all of these other ones are just having billboard after billboard or just ads and this, this and that, this one is a little bit quieter. This one is a little bit more, if you know, you know type of thing. So I know a lot of people appreciate that aspect of this, uh, of Goyard. So I can definitely see that, that view as well. Um, another thing I think maybe is their pricing. Um, they're, they're kind of pricey. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna lie, they're kind of pricey. Uh, even some of their small leather goods start at, I think, 500 plus. Um, there might be some that are a little bit less, but for the most part, there isn't something that's like maybe 100 bucks that you can really get a feel for the brand or anything like that. So I think pricing as well has, uh, has a lot to do with it. But I would have to say that those three things, the difficulty of access, the fact that they don't end up advertising, and their prices are really what keep Goyard from being more popular than I think they would be if they did those things. But I could be wrong. What do you guys think? Why do you think Goyard isn't as popular? Let us know in the comment section down below. Next question. Would you ever go for a vintage Chanel Diana bag? What about the vintage Chanel mini caviar Kelly bag? What do you think of vintage Chanel in general? I am a huge, huge fan of vintage Chanel. Now, when it comes to the Diana bag, that is a gorgeous bag. Of course, I prefer it in the white with the 24 karat gold plated hardware. I think that combo is amazing. Um, I have thought about going for it. The only reason why it hasn't really come up on my radar is because anytime I have looked at it on the pre-love market, they're either trashed or their pricing is a lot more than what I'm willing to spend for the bag. Uh, so that's been the biggest bummer, but I still think it's absolutely beautiful. Same goes for the uh, the Caviar Kelly. It is, it is an amazing bag. It's simple. I mean, the silhouette, it's absolutely stunning. So I'm a big fan of both of those. But just in general, when it comes to vintage Chanel, I feel like many of their items, I mean, don't get me wrong, there are some vintage pieces that, um, that look like they've seen some things, but others I feel... For as old as they are, they're holding up fabulously. And one of the things that I will always love and appreciate about vintage Chanel is a 24 karat gold plated hardware. You guys saw that this umbrella set, I bought it, um, I bought it last year. Uh, I talked about it on my items that I bought while I was away from YouTube video. I can't remember what I called it, but that video. Uh, and this umbrella set is from 1996 or 1997. It has the caviar leather with the 24 karat gold hard, uh, 24 karat gold plated hardware. And um, this hardware is just, it's beautiful. I love that it's that rich, rich yellow. Uh, I mean, I'm a big fan of the champagne gold hardware that they have now, and of course they have the regular gold hardware, but this one is just, I feel like it makes the gold, it makes the black just pop even more, uh, but it's it's amazing. And this 24 karat gold plated hardware, I feel it's it's almost indestructible because some of the pieces that I've seen, like from the like from the early 90s, uh, and the fact that the hardware is still intact and it's not chipping, that, that says something, you know? So I am a huge, huge fan of, um, of vintage Chanel. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And I really feel, as much as I love the new items now, I really feel that vintage items stand the, the test of time. The craftsmanship, the quality is nowhere near, nowhere near, um, 
it's it's nowhere near what it is now because now like I said I still love the pieces I think that they're amazing but I feel like back then it was just it was thicker the quality was just kind of like Louis Vuitton literally the same thing you can feel you can feel the love that went into those items I don't know maybe I'm crazy but <laughs> that's the way that I see it what about you guys are you a fan of vintage Chanel if you are let us know in the comment section down below next question which fashion house would you consider more attainable and the best quality and prices or have the prices gone up too much to even be able to answer the question? No kidding, right? Uh, do you think Gucci and Louis Vuitton are best choices for growing your luxe collection? Ooh, okay, so which fashion house do I consider more attainable and the best quality and prices? From my own personal experience, as of right now, and the way that I see it, I'm gonna have to go with Gucci. Gucci, just like every other fashion house, they have an array of different items to pick from, but I still think that Gucci has a more reasonable price point than many other fashion houses out there, especially for the quality that you're getting. So I'm gonna have to go with Gucci. And the only reason why I didn't say Louis Vuitton, I still like Louis Vuitton, but the only reason I didn't say them is because I feel like some of the items that are great for starting a luxury collection, you can't even get at the boutique. You can't get at the boutique. You can't find it online. So it doesn't really give you a lot of wiggle room to get those starter pieces, if you will. Um, whereas with Gucci, I feel like you have a better shot to be able to do that. So I think, uh, I definitely think that that fashion house, because some other, some other fashion houses, I mean, their prices are in the nosebleeds and you can't even fathom them anymore because they've gotten so they've gotten so out there, you know, but I still think that Gucci is at that reasonable price for the quality that you're getting and uh, the items that you're getting as well, because it's not like they're selling these tiny little bags for, for 500 bucks. They're selling, you know, bigger bags for like $2,300 and they still have a lot of the bells and whistles that you can appreciate and that some of the other fashion houses have that they're selling for a lot, a lot more. Uh, that might be a comparable type of material as well. So I'm going to have to say that Gucci hasn't gotten too out there and I still think that they're a little bit more reasonable and uh, they still have really 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 great craftsmanship and uh, like I said that is just my experience and how I feel right now back in the day that is not how I felt about Gucci I, <laughs> I was so anti Gucci for the longest time I didn't have the best experiences with their um, with their items the way that they were wearing but Ever since I started to incorporate the Fashion House back into my collection, uh, every item that I've had, I think for one, I think the card holder is the only one that really hasn't held up the best. But other than that, there's like no pop stitches, nothing like that. And they still have great, great price points. So definitely Gucci. But what about you guys? What, what Fashion House do you feel is a little bit more attainable and is great to be able to start a luxury collection? Let us know in the comment section down below. Next question. If you could sell all your handbags and buy your dream car, would you? Or would you choose to keep them and enjoy your collection one handbag at a time? <laughs> all right, uh, so if I could sell all of my bags and buy my dream car, would I? Definitely not, definitely not. So in this scenario, I would have to go for the enjoying uh, my collection one handbag at a time. And really that's because my dream car is a 1967 Super Sport Chevy Camaro. And that car is, <laughs> is a major, major gas guzzler. Uh, not only that, if I had it, it would be it would be a weekend type of car for me. It's not a it's not a car that I would end up using every single day. Uh, so for that reason, I would end up going for the handbags because the handbags, uh, you know, one at a time, what have you, I would be using it every single day. Uh, it would go with me everywhere I go. Whereas the car, it would only be for the weekends. Of course, it doesn't have to be for the weekends, but that's how, that's how it would be for me if I had it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have to go with the bags. Now, if I can choose which bags go first in that list, then that's even better. Uh, but yeah, I mean, in this case, as much as I love my dream car, the, <laughs> the Camaro Super Sport and handbags, I mean, handbags, <laughs> handbags end up outweighing the Camaro for sure. But what about you guys? If you could sell all of your bags and get your dream car, would you? Or would you enjoy your collection one handbag at a time instead? Let me know in the comment section down below. Next question. Do you still have your Chanel GST? 
Yes, I do. Here is the Chanel GST or the Grand Shopping Tote in the black caviar leather with the gold hardware. Uh, I still use this bag. I still love this bag. And this is definitely a forever piece for me. Uh, and as I said before, I do use it quite often. Not as much as obviously the top 10 that I shared with you guys this past weekend, but it is uh, always in the rotation and I am... I am madly in love with this bag. I think it is amazing. Uh, I got it, I wanna say it was 2013 or 2014. I paid $2,900 at the boutique for it. And in my opinion, for as, long, for as much as I've used it throughout the years, it has been holding up very, very well. Now the GST is known for sagging, usually right around here. Uh, actually, these little indentations have gotten a little bit more noticeable as the years have gone by, of course, with the use that this bag has had. But I still don't think it's as bad as some of the ones that I've seen on the pre-love market. It actually looks pretty good. This side is maybe a little bit worse than this one, but still, I think that this is an awesome bag. I have no wear on the corners. Um, yeah, I don't have any wear on the corners. I don't have, I like, I don't have any type of issues with it. I mean, besides the fact that you can see a little bit more of the indentation here and maybe up there, but other than that, it still looks as good as new. I am crazy about this bag for sure. It's actually uh, my husband's favorite handbag in my collection. And uh, whenever I do use it, I always get so many compliments on it. Um, I do like seeing this bag in the wild as well because whenever I do see it out and about, it just kind of sparks a little bit more uh, more love for it just because you don't see it too often. But it is a great, great bag. Very, very spacious, very, very comfortable. So still love it, still use it, still madly in love with that bag and it will always be a forever piece in my collection. Um, all right, now last question. What would you consider your best purchase for 2021? And you can only choose one. <laughs> You guys know me so well because many of you know that I have a hard time picking one thing or the other because I always end up doing like a runner up. But anywho, I digress. I'm getting off subject. My best purchase for 2021 out of everything that I purchased this year, it is not a handbag. It is not an SLG. It is not a pair of shoes. <laughs> it is without a doubt this Revlon hairbrush, air blow dryer, whatever the heck it's called, this guy right here. Um, when I talked about this on my best purchases and I actually used it, <laughs> I used it last night. That's why you can see it's a little bit, it doesn't look very good, right? I should have cleaned it before I did this video. Uh, but when I shared this on my best purchases of 2021, uh, I was so happy to, to see that a lot of you also felt this way about this, uh, about this item. And someone said it perfectly. It wasn't the best purchase of 2021 for them. It was a lifetime best purchase. And I'm gonna have to say the same thing. This, this has been amazing. Like I look forward to drying my hair, something that I have never felt my entire life because for the most part, I do tend to air dry my hair takes forever. Uh, but with this, it's like 10, 15 minutes at most. But honestly, it is amazing. Uh, so amazing that I really want to buy this for my mom for Christmas as well. She's kind of been leery of it. I think the same way that I was when I first started hearing about it, I thought people were just like, you know, losing their minds over something that maybe wasn't there. I feel, I feel like such an a-hole because I was judging without knowing. And now that I know, I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys have to try it so awesome definitely best best purchase of 2021 not that i didn't love the handbags that i bought and all those other things but this right here 100 percent, 100 percent takes the cake i am just i'm obsessed all right, you guys, so that does it for our Q&A video. I hope that you enjoyed it. This will be the last one for the year, and I won't start back up again until probably mid-January. So make sure and leave your questions for that video on the comment section down below. But I am so happy that I started back up with these videos. I miss them. I love the conversations that we have. I love getting your guys' feedback on every single topic that we discuss. So 
I am so happy that we're doing these again. Uh, but uh, I also know that I won't be seeing some of you guys until next year. I still have a few videos planned for this week, but still, I know that some of you guys uh, do tune in mostly for uh, MMQA. So I just wanted to take the time to say happy holidays. I hope that you guys are able to spend uh, the holiday season with your family and friends and you're able to make some amazing, amazing memories and have a wonderful time because really that's what it's all about. But I love you guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.